there are so many questions, though, that I just have. Like, I have questions about what Seattle is going to look like this year. Are they going to run the football more? Obviously, a defensive-minded head coach now that's taken over. It's weird to not see Pete Carroll as the head coach in Seattle, but that's the case of, uh, of where we are right now. But Geno Smith at his best has been a, a very, very good, if not great, starter in the NFL in his time in Seattle. But you just wonder, and maybe this is just me. Maybe you feel differently. But I look at this and go, like, when is the rug going to get pulled out? Is this going to continue or are we going to start to see that decline to the previous Geno Smith that we used to see before? I mean, dude, we kind of started to see that last year. It doesn't mean Geno's numbers mm -hmm. were bad last year, but he was a 70% right, right. passer in 2023, down to under 65% last year. He threw for 600 fewer yards. He threw for 10 fewer touchdowns, a couple more picks. The QBR went down eight points. And again, that's not like falling off the cliff. But if yeah. you take it one step further in the direction you weren't intending to, I think that might be the Dave Canales effect, right? Because he he left Geno, went to do it with Baker, and all of a sudden yeah. Baker Mayfield yeah. earns a $100 million contract, which is why Dave Canales is now in Charlotte coaching the Carolina Panthers, hoping they can do the same thing with Bryce Young. Uh, but last year was the worst season that Geno Smith had that he played close to a full season, right? Like, I, I think... I think you've already seen a bit of that regression. Now, if he has the same year this year that he had last year, it's good enough to get you into the playoffs as a wildcard team. It's mm -hmm. good enough to win a couple of playoff games. It's good enough to be a Super Bowl champ. I don't know if I'm quite ready to go that far. It would depend on how much help he gets from DK Metcalf and the rest of the boys. But we kind of already saw the regression last year. So the question is, what Geno Smith are you getting? You're getting the 2022 version that throws for 70%? Or you get the 2023 version that throws for 65. And when you look at a 17-game schedule, that is a difference. Doesn't seem like it, but it's a big difference, especially when you get down into the season and playoff spots are on the line. Just under 4,300 passing yards in 2022. Uh, played 15 games in 2023. Threw for a little over 3,600. 20 touchdowns, 9 interceptions versus the 30 and 11 uh, that year before. If you're looking at what his season-long props are this year, 3,400 passing yards, what we're sitting at right now, minus 110 both ways. 21 and a half passing touchdowns, minus 110 both ways for that too. 40 to 1 to lead the league in passing yards. 40 to 1 to lead the league in passing touchdowns. I wouldn't touch any of those right now. I wouldn't touch the MVP at 125 to 1. It's there, but like, let's be honest with ourselves. That's just a way to give your money back to whatever sports book, hopefully bet MGM, that you're giving your money to and you just continue to go through with that. But I, I will say there's, there's, there's a couple bets that involve at least Seattle that are interesting. And you could look at plus 750 for Seattle to win the division. Now that means that San Francisco has a lot of injury issues, which is a possibility given what we saw in the middle of last season when they started off 5-0, and then went on a losing streak when they started dealing with Debo and Trent Williams and guys were getting hurt. And then there's also just Seattle just, plus 200 to make the playoffs. Like, if I'm going to look at anything out of all of these that are here, and you said, hey, Nick, here's a bet. Here's a bonus bet. You got to use it. You got to bet something. I'm not touching the passing yards for Geno, even though 3,400 is not really a high number, but we've just talked about the questions that are certainly there. I'd look at probably Seattle to win the division at plus 750 if I had to use a bet, or more importantly, Seattle to make the playoffs. Not, a, not great odds, but two to one still. I, I, I would go probably that direction. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would, if I have to make the bet, I follow you. I, I don't think there's a Seattle future that I like. All right, there's just not. Yeah, and and that's not to say it's really that includes betting the under. I just don't know. I I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I look at the schedule. They open up with Denver, New England, but then they got Miami, Detroit, a Giants team that we don't know what they're going to be. The 49ers, a Falcons team that I I I think people are sleeping on. Atlanta, Atlanta is one of the teams that I did take an over bet on. You got Buffalo. You got the Rams, the Niners again. What are the Cardinals going to be? I don't know. You got them twice in three weeks with Aaron Rodgers and the Jets wedged in the middle. The Packers, Vikings, Bears, and Rams. This is one of those teams that I would love to tell you. I've got some deeper analysis. But when I look up and down the schedule, there's, there's not an easy three-game set anywhere in it, bud. Like, there's not a three-game set that I feel good about the Seahawks anywhere on it, especially when, as we pointed out, 
We don't know what Geno Smith we're getting. I don't know if I'm getting the, the, the one from the Pro Bowl a couple of years ago or the one last year or two could step back or if there's one that will tep- take an even further step back uh, this year with the question marks that, Seah- that the Seahawks have elsewhere on offense. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you. If you gave me a bet that I had to make a bet for, like I think Geno Smith from 2023, uh, excuse me, 2022, can absolutely get them into a wild card spot. I don't know if yeah. Geno from 2023 can. And if you're looking at their strength of schedule, you went down, obviously, what that looks like. I mean, re- literally middle of the pack. If you're looking at sharp football, it's 15th, and I, I prefer that versus, like, let's look at the team's records from last year because, let's be honest, that means very little considering teams are very different from what we saw last season. But, you know, win total is 7.5. I just there, – there's – there's it's a team – the Seahawks are a team that you look at and you say they're not flashy. There's not a lot there that you're overly excited about. But I, I feel like the floor is a bit high, but the ceiling is maybe low. So they've got this short window where seven and a half wins just feels so – it feels so sharp. Talk to me about the receiver core and kind of how you feel they're going to mesh with Geno Smith this year. Yeah, the receiver room is interesting because that's a lot of mouths to feed, you know. Um, and they, they, you can feed them all, but you got to be really efficient. You know, uh, someone asked me the other day, what's like a, a mo-, they said, is DK going to have a monster season? And I, the more I've thought about it, I just don't, I don't feel, it's going to sound crazy for a second, but bear with me. I don't think a monster DK season is like what's best for the 2024 Seahawks. Like in just terms of like raw volume, I don't think he needs, he gets like 170 targets and, you know, has a hundred and, 30 catches or something like that. And, you know, I just feel like because they have other guys who are talented, it actually benefits them more to spread the wealth uh, a little bit, you know, particularly as it gets later in the season, it can't just be, Hey, if DK doesn't go off, we lose. You know what I mean? Um, so the more I've thought about it, it's like what the 2023 Brandon Ayuk season is probably a better like comp. And that, that's actually a really good season. Of course, I think he was like all pro to some extent. But it was, if you look at it, it was really more just maximizing the opportunities he did get. I think Brandon only had like 75 catches, but had like 1,300 yards, you know, and he only scored, I think, seven touchdowns, which isn't a ton. Um, but because he wasn't just eating up all the volume, that's why you, I think Kittle cracked 1,000, you know, Debo still got to eat, and then they still had the best running back you know, in the league. Like everybody got to eat in an offense that had a ton of weapons. So I think, you know, DK should still have a big year, probably 1,100, 1,200 yards. Um, but I think what's more important than some of the volume, you know, you mentioned his over under, I'm not sure what it is, but like, I think he just needs to be more efficient. His reception percentage was 55% last year. That's terrible. Um, I think that's a career low for him. He gets that up to about 68, 65, something like that. I think right there, he has a much better year, even without getting, you know, a ton more volume in terms of targets. 